The man glanced outside the cell and saw no guards, then started his escape plan. He copied the tattoo on his arm onto a piece of paper, folded it into a plane, and added a piece of chewing gum. While a young boy was picking things up outside the prison, Michael skillfully flew the paper plane out of the prison. The boy set aside what he was holding, picked up the plane, and stuffed the gum in his mouth. Quickly, the boy ran to Lincoln's residence, as usual, stealthily slipping the paper plane under a mat. But this time he was caught red-handed by Lincoln. Through Sheba's translation, they learned that the young boy was sent by the bubblegum man, receiving a piece of gum as payment for each errand, though he had never seen the bubblegum man himself. Seeing the boy's terrified appearance, Lincoln took out all the candy from his pocket and gave it to him, telling him to continue delivering messages. Seeing Lincoln's kind side, Sheba found the man before her not so detestable after all. Noticing the strange ancient blue script on the letter, which seemed to form a pattern, Benjamin, who was looking at a city map, was inspired. It turned out Michael had drawn a map of the city with a red dot marked on it, clearly the place Michael wanted them to find. They found an abandoned cabin according to the marked location and determined that Michael had planned the escape there from the various documents filling the walls. The retreat point indicated it was currently under terrorist control. Seeing a portrait of the terrorist leader Abu on the table, they realized that Michael wasn't the only one escaping. Meanwhile, Abu, just released from solitary confinement, prepared to enforce his laws in the prison, executing all infidels and homosexuals directly by hanging. The guards upstairs turned a blind eye to this. Soon, Michael's cellmate Sid was caught for being homosexual. Whip and Jaw wanted to rescue him but were stopped. Michael hurriedly told Abu that Sid's help was needed for the escape, but the cruel Abu was unmoved. Seeing poor Sid about to be hanged, Michael defied Abu's obstruction and went to save him. As the situation was about to spiral out of control, the guards upstairs fired a warning shot, then gathered the prisoners together for re-education. Meanwhile, Michael successfully sent a message to Sarah through his son, which was spotted by the assassin who had once tried to kill Lincoln and Sarah. They followed Sarah to the hospital where Jacob was staying and secretly hacked Sarah's phone while they were being intimate. Sarah went to the bathroom, and at that moment, the psychopathic killer Teabag appeared behind her, leaving Sarah utterly panicked. But Teabag seemed to bear no ill will, telling Sarah that someone named Udis had donated a mechanical arm to him, a high-tech device worth at least a few million. Confused, Teabag went online and discovered that Udis was Sarah's ex-husband, Michael. I looked up Outis on the interwebs. Whose face comes up at your dead ex-husband's looking very much alive. Lazarus arisen from the dead. He's drawn us into something, isn't he? Come near me or my family again, I will kill you. Teabag secretly approached Sarah to understand the reason behind this. But Sarah, knowing Teabag's despicable nature, refused to cooperate with him and walked away without using the bathroom. At that moment, Sarah took out her phone and noticed the information constantly changing, realizing her phone had been hacked. She hurried to a phone repair shop and asked the owner to check who had controlled her phone. Ten minutes later, the two assassins arrived at the shop based on the phone's location and demanded the shop owner reveal Sarah's whereabouts. Seeing their violence, the shop owner had no choice but to confess. While Sarah watched everything from across the street, the assassins noticed Sarah too and rushed over. Sarah ran away, opening the back door only to find no exit. In desperation, she crawled through the next room to the rooftop. The assassins followed her up. Sarah ran desperately on the rooftop but found no other way out. Seeing a garbage truck below, she prepared to jump. When the assassins reached the rooftop and found Sarah gone, they looked down at the departing garbage truck, thinking Sarah had hidden inside to escape. A.W. cursed out loud, complaining about why Poseidon hadn't let her kill Sarah sooner, then stormed off angrily. Unknown to them, their conversation was clearly heard by Sarah hiding under the pipes. Back home, she received a call from the phone shop owner. The phone shop owner found out the reason her phone was hacked. It was because someone had used Sarah's fingerprint to gain control over her phone. Sarah suddenly remembers that when she went to Paul's office, she received a glass of water and her fingerprints must have been left on it. She shared this with Jacob, who had just been discharged from the hospital. Jacob urged Sarah to report to the police immediately, but Sarah, knowing the police couldn't solve this issue, decided to sell her phone to the shop owner instead. Jacob questioned if she was just running from reality. After some calm reflection, Sarah said that her biggest lesson over the years was choosing to run away. Thus, she decided to take action like Michael. Sarah immediately called Teabag to collaborate and asked him to investigate Paul, suspecting him of stealing her fingerprints. Meanwhile, in Yemen, 
Michael and Whip were queuing for food, after terrorist Abu embraced Michael like a brother upon being released from solitary confinement. Whip began to doubt Michael's allegiance, because the mission given by Poseidon was to rescue Abu, indicating Abu was affiliated with Poseidon, yet they were abandoned by Poseidon, and Michael still promised to help Abu escape, confusing Whip. Michael explained that he only temporarily agreed to help Abu escape to ensure their safety until the right moment to ditch him. Despite Michael's explanations, Whip remained unsettled. Then, Michael devised a plan upon noticing a guard's watch and suddenly punched Whip in the face. The two of them were struggling, and the guards came to pull them apart. The ensuing scuffle allowed Michael to stealthily steal the guard's gold watch, explaining it was all a misunderstanding, leaving Whip utterly confused. After the guards left, Abu approached Michael, comforting him with promises of their imminent escape. Michael whispered something to Abu and walked away. Back in the cell, his cellmates were puzzled by Michael's actions and his close relationship with terrorist Abu, casting doubt on his stance. To clarify, Michael disclosed the entire plan. A guard, suspecting Michael had stolen his gold watch during the commotion, turned their cell upside down in search but didn't find the watch. Frustrated, the guard locked all prisoners in their cells to search for the watch. Aligning with Michael's plan, Locked in solitary, Abu could only stay in his cell, while the escape could only proceed from Michael's cell. Once Sid's father, Muhammad, successfully cut the power, they could disappear from the cell like ghosts. Meanwhile, Abu boasted to his followers about Michael's promise to lead he out of prison. The original plan was to escape alone, but Abu insisted on taking his followers. At that moment, the guards who were looking for the gold watch arrived and started a carpet search of Abu's cell and found the gold watch in Abu's clothes. Abu realized he had been played, simultaneously, to ensure Michael's successful escape from war-torn Yemen. Lincoln and Sheba worked on getting passports for leaving the country. Benjamin and Muhammad were responsible for cutting the city's power supply. They quickly arrived at the meeting place, but when Lincoln checked the passports, they turned out to be blank. Sheba was then taken away by Cyclops, who had been lying in ambush, and Lincoln, outnumbered, was knocked unconscious. Cyclops demanded to know the identity of the man who came with Sheba. When Sheba refused to cooperate, Cyclops punched her. It turned out they were former classmates and had dated. However, Cyclops lost control and attempted to do unspeakable things to Sheba, resulting in her blinding him in one eye. And they became enemies, seeing Sheba now trapped like a bird in a cage. Cyclops took the opportunity to try and finish the vile act he hadn't completed years ago. Meanwhile, Lincoln awoke from his unconscious state and heard Sheba's desperate screams. He wedged a metal rod into the bottom of the door and, using his strong physique, quickly broke it open, just as Cyclops was about to succeed. Lincoln threw him out of the room and began to beat him mercilessly. Meanwhile, Muhammad and Benjamin had arrived at the main power station. Muhammad expertly pulled down the circuit breaker and then instructed Benjamin to turn off the backup power while he dealt with the security guards. Faced with the complex wiring, Benjamin, overwhelmed, decided to forcefully sabotage it while wearing insulating gloves. Sure enough, the city's lights went out, and the prison cells plunged into darkness. Michael and his team, having waited for this moment, immediately started their escape plan. Abu, just taken away by the guards, seized the chaos to fight back, knowing Michael intended to leave them behind. Abu and his followers hurried to Michael's cell, hearing Michael was escaping. Cross from the neighboring cell decided to flee with his brothers. They ambushed the guards, stole their keys, and opened Michael's cell door. To prevent the two from following, Whip dismantled the bed with his feet. However, with the rooftop guards nearby, they had no chance to escape through the hole and were trapped in the ventilation ducts. Cross and his brother, standing on the bed frame, stretched into the hole in the rooftop and then grabbed Sid, pulling him down from above. As the standoff continued, Abu and his followers arrived. Seeing the escapees, Abu's men shot and killed Cross's brother, with no choice. Michael abandoned Sid and fled. As Abu and his men were about to follow, armed guards arrived. Outnumbered, Abu reluctantly put down his gun. When the guards entered the cell and noticed the hole in the roof, they immediately called for rooftop patrol. Michael and his team, having just climbed out, were caught. Benjamin, coming to assist, saw Michael and his team captured and had to leave disappointedly. Injured Lincoln also hurried back with a barely alive Sheba. The years-long escape plan ended in failure, and Michael and his team were placed in solitary confinement. Terrorist Abu, now aware of Michael's stance, threatened that Michael's death would come once he was released from solitary. Michael, usually a master strategist, 
was now in despair. He took out Jaw's phone to record his last words. However, before he could send the video, the phone automatically shut down. Sir, if I, if I do die, make them put my real name. Don't let them put Kaylee Loudison. It's still.